Hey folks, Scott Sager with you. Welcome to the 2018 Boys Swimming Sectional Preview. On my left, we have Coach Kevin Rainey. On my right, Miss Stephanie Brown. And we have uh, Mrs. Stephanie Brown, I should say it that way. But uh, we had a lot of compliments on the last preview we did for the girls. Uh, the girls, let's, let's just stop there for a second and talk about them. Wow, we took two more to state this year. And uh, I, I have no idea how many records were set in that pool in, on Warsaw or in Warsaw on that Saturday, but my goodness, they were swimming fast. Yeah, we um, broke five records on Saturday of sectionals um, and sent two girls to state. So it was, it was a fun meet. We had um, lots of time drops on Thursday and on Saturday. Um, we had lots of girls that dropped a bunch of time on Thursday night, and then they were able to maintain that time drop on Saturday, um, which was all, I mean, it was awesome. It was a fun weekend. We had a lot of fun. Um, and then last weekend we went down to the IUPUI Natatorium with Maddie and Abby and they had some great swims there too and it was just a great way to end the season with the girls. Just phenomenal. Uh, Abby McCarter uh, was in the 100 breast and the 200, and the 200 IM. Now the 100 breast is what she set the record at a 155 in Warsaw on that Saturday morning. Is that correct? One of, yeah. yeah, I've listened to the replay on the call a number of times because I predicted it with 25 to go. So, uh, yeah, um, just an incredible speed. Um, and then Maddie, of course, uh, went all the way on to compete in the finals on Saturday, right? And what event was that? She swam the 50 free. Um, Friday night she qualified 11th place to swim on Saturday. And then she ended up 10th on Saturday and actually beat two girls from the finals. So we said that she ended up with the eighth fastest time on Saturday. So That's incredible. Again, Maddie Saylor, she signed up already um, to go to San Jose State. That's a Division One school out there in sunny California. Um, you won an award as well on Saturday. And I know you're <laughs> humble, but... Uh, Coach, coach of the year uh -huh. for that sectional, right? Yes, yes. That's pretty impressive. And you've won that before, have you not? Uh-huh, yes. Yeah. Look at her, she's so humble. <laughs> what do you yeah. think, Kevin? Uh, yeah. Pretty good day on Saturday, huh? Yeah, that the girls sectional was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of, they, they were announcing school records for all the kids that set school records, um, not just ours, but um, it, it seemed like every race there were two or three school records being set, which is a testament to all the kids in our sectional. Um, the, the hard work and the and the you know the importance that the coaches are placing on the sectional um, it's where the kids are swimming the fastest and uh, so the sectional is getting faster which is great uh, you just tell the kids you, you know it is what it is and you go do your thing and it's a lot of fun to see other kids swim fast and and you know and to see your kids compete and battle and uh, I think it's um, it's only going to get better so it's a lot of fun to be part of that. Absolutely, it is a lot of fun. And we're gonna have the uh, girl, or excuse me, the boys sectional this Thursday. We'll have the preliminary starting at 5.30 on RTC TV4, and then we'll be back on Saturday for the finals starting at one o'clock. So uh, again, let's, one of the things I was a little remiss on last time was talking about all the schools that are in our sectional. So let's see if we can list them off here. Uh, we know Pioneer's there. Uh -huh. We know that Columbia City, yep. Huntington North, Manchester, mm -hmm. Wabash, yep. Rochester, yep. Warsaw, mm -hmm. CMA, yep. Culver, yep. and Culver. Culver no. Community. Culver Community. Or, I'm sorry, Culver Academy. Culver yeah. Academy. Okay. Yeah. Am I missing anyone? Plymouth. Plymouth and, Logan. and Logansport. So this is one of the largest regions for a sectional when we compare that to the basketballs and whatnot. Right. We, we kind of cover a, a vast area with the swimming. As you're looking at uh, the, the events happening on Saturday, are there any that we feel like we're very much in contention for? Is that something we don't want to jinx? Is that, you know, I mean, I mean there are a number of events. And, and to digress for a second, as coaches, you have to decide going into sectional. There is, this is where strategy begins to take place because you're looking at all of your swimmers, you're looking at all of the events, and you're trying to place where Rochester and the individuals can come out first, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we look at a lot of things. We look at how fast our kids are, um, what their best events are, and we spend a little bit of time looking at um, where we think some kids from some other schools might be. Gotcha. And we do the same thing with, with relays. Um, so there's a lot that comes into play when we're, when we're picking the events. And of course, we can only put three people in every event. So that, um, 
also has to come into play. Absolutely. So there's a lot of logistics that go into prepping for this, all the events really throughout the year, especially the invites. But uh, as you get into sectionals in the state tournament, it becomes a bigger and bigger deal. Let's talk, uh, I, I guess I want to get into the relays first. How are Rochester's relay teams looking this year? We'll lean over to Kevin this time. Well, uh, you know, the seed times right now for the relays are, um, they're pretty consistent with what um, a lot of the schools swam in their conference meets, okay. uh, which, which is nice because uh, we can kind of, we can see who, who they have in those relays and kind of figure out. Um, and we're familiar with a lot of those kids and we kind of have an idea based on knowing the coaches too, where we think they may um, put their, you know, their best kids. And, you know, we only have, you know, 13 guys. So we, we just really came down to, it came down to, we got to put our four fastest guys on the two relays where we think we can score the highest. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, whatever else we can do in the past, you know, especially on the girls' side, we tried to, quote, unquote, avoid one of the Warsaw swimmers, if, if at all possible, that ended up going to Purdue. So, you know, and that, that worked out, but sometimes it didn't work out, and the girls just had to hold their own and beat, beat her anyway. But we, we try to get our relays set up so that um, we've got our four fastest guys, and if, you know, if, if they don't win or whatever they get, you know, that's all, that's all we got. Sure. So that's kind of the relay strategy that we, that we've kind of employed in the last several years. Yeah, but you are looking at kind of the other schools. You are matching up a little bit more than you would in. Yes, we're trying to, um, trying to match up or, or get our four fastest if possible on, on in a relay where maybe we think like Warsaw might put their four fastest guys somewhere else. And, uh, um, and when do you get to change that? Uh, we're looking at what, what we call the preliminary, preliminary sheet for the heats. But um, when does this get locked down? So on, on Thursday, uh, before the meet at our coaches meeting, uh, we have to declare our four swimmers for each relay. Okay. Um, and then on Saturday, you declare again. And it doesn't have to be the same four. There's lots of rules that come into play with it. Um, uh, kind of involved but you know you can't swim more than a certain number of events and things like that so it's it's you know you've got your your eight top guys and so it's kind of a puzzle figuring out who's going to go where and you know sometimes we might have you know like for girls we had Thursday night our medley relay was different than what it was on Saturday right. um, just for now is it uh, and again for our viewers who aren't familiar as you're in this coaches meeting and you have to declare are you hoping that you get to declare last because you're going to make some last minute shifts based on what the other guys did no you you just you can declare and you can actually change the lineup oh. um before they as long as you get it in before they announce the event okay. so we can you know you can wait as long as as you want but it's you know it's just a formality and and you know we're not that deep where we can make some of those strategic changes, but we have we have decided we switched a relay on Thursday night of the girls sectional um, two events before uh, we we made a change uh, based on where we thought we were going to end up on Saturday. So you know it's constant. It's not you know lock them in and you know turn it in and be done with it. It's uh, we're we're trying to eke out as many as many points as we possibly can and, and where we think that may go. And the kids are familiar with that now, you know, because, you know, they, they may think, well, I have that spot or I have this spot on the relay. Well, th that's not true because we change them enough that that usually it comes, you know, as no surprise. I mean, we did it last year with Mason Brady on the 400 free relay and took him off of that relay and, and put Isaac Smith on there. And it was a, it was a last minute thing. And, everybody handled it you know they just rolled with it like okay that's what we're doing so it, it was it was a you know having mason come off the relay and and having isaac go on both of them were like yep that's what should happen and we're okay with it so it's it's stuff that we have talked about in practice and it's important that the kids kind of buy into that because you know you can have some feelings that may sure. you know get stomped on a little bit or whatever but um but we're we're just trying to see how many points we can eke out absolutely well very neat very neat well we want to pay homage to some of your seniors who are some of your senior guys this year um jeff rupert and mason copeland and mason brady are senior boys this year 
They're going to be missed. Those have been strong swimmers for you the past three, four years, right? Right. They, they've done a, they've done a really good job. They've been uh, stalwarts on the uh, relays in the in the distance with Mason Copeland. Um, been, and he's a big guy to be doing the distances. Well, yeah, he's he's got a lot of stamina. He's got a lot of endurance, and those distance events have gotten a lot faster in the last two years. And he's kind of held on. And he's held his own. I think he's seated sixth in both the 200 and the 500, uh, and fifth is what I just got waved. Um, so he's fifth, right? And Isaac is fourth, I think. And, okay. and uh, that's Isaac Smith. Yeah, Isaac Smith. So, so the seniors, um, you know, that have been real, real important in their individual events. Um, Jeffrey and, and Mason Brady, and they've been a big part of, um, especially the medley relay that two years ago qualified for the state meet by winning. Yeah. And um, we've got those guys back. You know, when we feel like we've got, you know, one of the fastest backstrokers and one of the fastest breaststrokers, we've got a good shot. Yeah. So they're, they're going to be missed. Talk to us about um, some of your other coaches because, you know, we're here and uh, we are talking about uh, the boys swimming, but the diving, uh, we do have a diver, correct, is going to be competing. That is? Yeah, Cameron Gunter. Cameron. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cameron's come a long way with his dives. What year is Cameron now? He's a sophomore. So, so mm -hmm. still a couple more years, and uh, I know we've got some eighth graders coming up, so I'm looking for some neat dives over yeah. the next few years. Mm -hmm. But um, Cameron will be there. He dives on Thursday? No. No, the, everything's Saturday everything for him, Everything's Saturday it? for divers, yes. Mm -hmm. They do their first eight dives in the morning, okay. and then they do their three, they, they do three more dives after the 50 um, during the swimming events. And the diving coach is um, Lisa Andrews. Yes. Yeah, so she... And she works uh, over at the high school, correct? She does. She's a guidance counselor at the yes. high school. She came onto our staff this year, and we've been really happy with Lisa. We've liked having her on our staff. And um, Katie Sanchez mm -hmm. has been uh, on our coaching staff for a while, longer than Coach Rini, in fact. Um, and uh, Jared Feldman is our strength training and dry land coach. Yeah. So. Dr. Feldman, he's, he's brought a lot to the table with the strength, yes. strength training and core workouts, et cetera, right? Um, so those are some of the other coaches. You've got tons of volunteers. If you don't know, folks, every event has to be timed. <laughs> and uh, you can have some places 10 lanes. Uh, typically eight is, you know, Rochester has, what, six? So, um, you know, you have to have timers for each of those. And those are typically parents or fans coming out and volunteering to do that. Of course, there are some double checks there to make sure that it's legitimate. But I'm sure you guys want to thank all the volunteers who've, who've stepped up. Talk to me, I don't know what I'm doing with this mic between me and you here, but um, talk to me a little bit about um, where we're going with our sprints this year. Do we have anyone that's just a standout at Rochester in the sprints? Well, we, we, we will have three. Uh, we'll have three swimmers in the 50 and the 100. Those would be considered your sprint events. Um, and you know the the sprinting one of the culver military uh swimmers has traditionally swam the im and the 100 butterfly the last two years he's won both and this year uh he switched his program so he's going to swim the 50 and the 100 and that and he's good yeah. and uh he's good so you know to to make any kind of dent and and have any kind of shot to to do anything is going to be really tough but mm -hmm. but the the sprinters have uh kind of melded together and they're looking at the 200 free relay um as a as a really good as a really good relay that i don't think the four of them have actually swam this year okay. yet I, I don't think they have but um but they're they're real excited about it and uh, will tone and uh reese Rini, they've been they've been primarily the 50 and, and 100 guys and um you know and then we'll sprinkle interchange some other guys in there brody stone and um uh then then we you know we have the other the other guys that we interchange mm -hmm. so but for the most part reese and will are the are the 50 and the 100 guys that's great i'll take the opportunity by the way as you mentioned reese he did one heck of a job on the call with me um just a heck of a job um he came up on saturday as you guys know and he just sat there and he knew the times i had a lot of compliments on him and he was a pleasure to work with we look forward to working with him again now this saturday you get to be spared my voice or this weekend you're going to be spared my voice we're bringing carmen Reeves and uh, Abby McCarter are going to be handling the call for us for this. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We're bringing in the experts, which is much better than me saying, hey, they're in the pool. They're wet. Um, so you're then, not wrong. Yeah. That's, you're uh, not wrong. That's right. I, I, but uh, so we're looking for, forward to a great broadcast there. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I've worked with both of them before and exceptionally knowledgeable. And 
just like Reese, uh, he brought a lot of passion to that. If you listen to some of those races, he is cheering them on, and that's what we want. Um, now, Tippecanoe Valley has a sprinter as well, do they not? Um, a gentleman that we've seen a couple of times on uh, the new RTC um, channel, Tippecanoe Valley TV, which is on 343. Um, we've seen a couple of him uh, events with him swimming, and he's broken some pool records over at Tippecanoe Valley. Yes, he. I know he has their 50, Chase Brower. Chase Brower, thank um, you. Yeah, and I don't know if he has the 100 or not, um, but but he's pretty quick. Yeah. So, um, yep, he'll be he'll be in the 50 and the 100 at sectionals all set. So. That's awesome. Well, more folks in the mix from our area. We love to see the swim programs. We love the competition, right? We don't we don't shy away from the competition. We want to see everybody doing their best. Right. That's what that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's why it, it's faster. I mean, the kids get faster because the kids compete, um, and it's supposed to be difficult to advance to the state meet, and um, and it it is. Uh, it's getting more difficult as we go, and that's the that's the beauty of it. Um, you think of Maddie and being as as fast as she went, and and she's you know tenth. Yeah. So yeah. that's it's really good, but it's really fast, and you get a really. Um, like I said, at the girls sectional, just so many school records, so many girls swimming faster than anybody at their school has ever swam. So many events, so many times. It it was it really brought home that the 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 sectionals and the kids are getting faster, and there's only one way that that happens. And uh, um, we're fun. We're, we're glad to be part of that. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's competition just breeds these these great speeds coming out. Uh, Maddie, Abby, all of the great swimmers we've had. As I look at this list, my goodness, there are a lot of very recent, during your tenure, records up there. Mm -hmm. I asked you last time, and you were way too humble about it, but, uh, you know, are you sprinkling, ma sprinkling magic fairy dust on these guys, or what? Nope. Hard work. Hard work. <laughs> it's all on the kids, is what you said before, and, and, and that's just fantastic. Um, just tons and tons of new records and great things happening. Now, uh, Warsaw, as you guys know, I've been there four years, three years now, and uh, it is wall-to-wall -wall people the entire time. I mean, they pack it in early with diving, and they stay all day. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Warsaw is a great place, by the way. They have been wonderful hosts for us, providing internet connectivity, giving us the space that we need. Uh, we're going to do our best to bring this to you live and in living color, as they say. So uh, anything else about the sectionals this year, guys? No, I, I am excited. Uh, the boys are, uh, I feel like the boys are prepared. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of a strategy for each day, Thursday and Saturday. And um, we just stick to the game plan yeah. and just, you know, follow. Um, we keep, you know, keep doing what we've been doing. It seems to, it seems to be working. Mm -hmm. So we'll just stick with that. And uh, we're, we're pushing positive vibes. <laughs> Uh, all the way through. That's what we're. That's what we're doing. Well, we want you to send those positive vibes as well. If you can't attend over in Warsaw on Thursday or Saturday, please tune in to RTC. You can catch us, of course, on the website rtc4.com, or you can check us out uh, locally on RTC Channel 304. So uh, we just wish you guys the best. We thank you for all you're doing, and uh, keep up the good work here at RHS. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Leadership. Dedication. Decisive. Trust. Passion. Confidence. Positive. Relentless. Courage. Respect. Accountability. Determination. Heart. Integrity. Focus. Inspiration. Persistence. Vision. Teamwork. Support. We are Rochester. Go! Zebras.